Hey everyone and welcome to lesson number 11. In this lesson we're going to be setting up the site pagination as well as uh, talking about how you can use Google Web Fonts and uh, another website called Font Squirrel to make your page pop a little bit more and kind of break the mold of using standard uh, web safe fonts and they're perfectly suitable to use unless Google is down you'll be good to go and if Google is down we'll set them to fall back to something else so you should be okay either way so let me show you exactly how this pagination is working let me go to the real site so here's the site that's on my server and I've set it up for pagination um, I have more posts available on it I'm up to I have number 9 loaded up on here, even though this is lesson number 11. And if you click the arrow to the right, it takes you to the next set. If uh, there were, right now it's holding 6 posts per page. If I had set it to less or more, the, these buttons here will let you navigate to the very beginning or the very end. Right now I only have 2 pages worth of posts, so it really doesn't matter which one you click, but it shows you the functionality that they have. And basically to do that, it's real easy. Just choose the spot where you want it and we'll throw ours after the main container before the end wrapper and before the footer so right in here that showed up hopefully and uh, let me highlight it just to make sure it's so right there and then you just click this uh, you can scroll over here it says record set paging click the down arrow click navigation bar record set you want the blog and display using um, images. You can use text or images. I used images. It doesn't matter. Click OK and it does all the work for you. Now one thing that we we'll want to do so that we can see this, I think we only have two posts on our page. So up here, navigate to where it says max rows blog equal 10. So this means 10, 10 entries will show up at one time. I'm going to change it to 1 just so we can get this to work. Otherwise it won't show up at all. So save that. and it worked just fine so click next and this is the next page even though they look the same this is my first title this is my latest post so that's working just great now you can tell these are like a weird green color if you wanted to change the color of those <clears throat> you can find them located in it automatically put it in the images folder because we indicated that's where we were saving our images. And you can see you have next GIF, uh, previous GIF, last GIF, first GIF, and all you do is open these up in whatever program you're comfortable with. If you want to open this in Open with Photoshop, I'll show you how you can change color really easy. Did it open it? Is it thinking about it? Oh, there it goes. Sorry. Just took some time here since I got so much stuff running. Now, let me zoom in. You can tell it's that green color, hopefully. And all you have to do to change the color is hit Command U, or you can come up to uh, Image Mode. Oh, I'm sorry, Image. And then you can do Adjustments. Awesome. Let me show you this. It won't let me show you because it's Adjustments and then hue and saturation and then click the colorize button and you can tell the color change there and then you can drag your saturation which will choose the brightness basically and then drag the hue section to change the color to whatever you want so we can choose like a blue that's really similar to the blue that we're using just toying with this a little bit we'll turn the brightness up there we go click OK save it Yep, we saved it. Cool. Close that. Now when we come back, let me go ahead and close Photoshop. Now when we come back to our site, you can tell now that this is, I'm sorry, this is blue and this is green. And you can do that with each image so that they all matched. But I just wanted to show you a quick way. You can actually change the colors of those. It's not a big deal. If you wanted to change the whole look of the image, you can totally do that and then rename them first GIF, second GIF. Uh, etc. and you can do your own personalized images. Uh, now for the custom fonts. It's really really easy. Let's go to uh, let's type in Google Web Fonts. 
and there it is at the top. I uh, will include this in the important lesson links. And basically, you just come through here and find a font that you like, and they are constantly adding new ones. It's pretty awesome. Uh, we used. Let me see if I have them in here. If I, I don't know if I insert custom fonts here. So I have. I don't have them in here. So I need to find them. And I believe I used. I think I used this one. Let me see here. I think I still have it in the CSS. Joseph and Sand, so I did use that one. And to use this, all you do is click on the font, click use this font, and then you just come down here and you just paste the link in. So just copy this link. Come back to the source code and paste it in. So now you've basically linked to a style sheet that Google has set up um, that will pull in or download this particular font to be used on your page. Now to actually activate it, it shows you here. It says under the font family, add Josephine Sands with uh, with little quotes around it. So you can see here when I had one. Josephine Sands right here, just like that. And then you can still provide fallbacks like Helvetica and Arial, and it works just fine. Um, here I have another one called Cope, so I need to find that one. You need to search, they're getting so many. It takes a while to get through them all, and then you miss them sometimes. Hmm, not seeing it anymore. Alphabetical. There it is, Copes, right there. Just click it. Use this font. Paste it in. Copy it. And paste it in. And then make sure you include Copes under the font family wherever you want to use it. And then the last one, I had one more that I used and it was called uh, just another hand that's it and so you can see how easy this is you can pick lots of fonts they don't take that long to download they're always available for the most part and it's by far the easiest way to add custom fonts now when we go to our page now we have these custom fonts here so Pretty spiffy. This is my first title. This is my subtitle. And those are kind of close together. Let me go in here and see if I need to add a space to those. I think this will help. Yes, that's better. And you can tell everything's been affected. Everything's changed. Uh, all the fonts have been chosen. Everything looks pretty nice. Might want to make that a little bit bigger in the CSS, but for the most part, that's all there is to it. I really just wanted to show you exactly how that worked. Um, there was one other site I wanted to show you real quick, and it's a, there's a little bit more to choose from. It's called Font Squirrel. I'm just going to Google it. FontSquirrel.com And they have tons of fonts to choose from, and if you find one that you like, it's really easy. Let's click view. So you can see all the different forms of it. You don't have to download all the forms if you don't want to. You just pick one that you like. You click download the OTF file and then come up here to app font face generator. And you have to make sure you agree. And then all you do is add fonts the fonts that you downloaded, you add them to there and it walks you through it and basically it'll download a CSS file that will include the CSS that you need for all of your fonts that you can just paste into your site, um, the folders at least, and then it tells you exactly how you add them to the CSS so that they show up and it works much the same. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, not quite as fast, 
but it just gives you that much more to choose from. So I just really wanted to show you kind of how that works. It's pretty awesome too. So that will be included in the lesson links as well. I'm going to wrap up this lesson. In the next lesson, uh, we pretty much have everything done. We've changed all the fonts. We've done some of the JavaScript. We've pretty much wrapped up everything that have to do with the, the site in general. So I think in the next one, we will go ahead and I'll show you how to upload your site and um, some of the key information will need to change so that it will work on an actual web server and that will probably take the whole time so in the very next lesson lesson number 12 that's what we'll be doing we'll be taking the site and finally putting it online